It is the symbol of progress, the engine of civilization, an invention so fundamental, so ubiquitous, that we often forget it had to be invented at all, the wheel. It underpins our world in countless ways, from the wheelbarrow to the car, to the landing gear of a jet. For millennia, its origin story has been a subject of intense debate. We have traditionally looked to the plains of Mesopotamia, to the Sumerians and their cities. But what if the story began somewhere else entirely? A groundbreaking study suggests that the wheel was not invented by some scholar in an ancient city, but rather was the result of incremental innovation in a very specific environment, the Neolithic copper mines of the Carpathian Mountains. For centuries, the consensus pointed to the Fertile Crescent as the birthplace of the wheel. Archaeological discoveries, like the famous Standard of Ur from 2600 BC, offered compelling evidence. This Sumerian artifact, etched with shell and limestone, depicts four wheeled wagons used for transport and warfare, rolling across the plains of Mesopotamia. The narrative was clean and linear. The wheel emerged around 3500 BC, possibly evolving from the potter's wheel, a slightly earlier invention. It fit our image of the Sumerians as pioneers of urban civilization, their cities buzzing with innovation, but cracks began to appear in the story. The timeline was tight, and evidence from other parts of the world challenged the Mesopotamian monopoly. The most striking discovery came in 2002 in the marshes of Slovenia, the Ljubljana Marshes Wheel. Crafted from ash and oak, this artifact was carbon dated to between 5,100 and 5,350 years old, roughly 3,400 to 3,150 BC. With its square axle hole, it was proof of sophisticated wheel technology in old Europe, contemporaneous with or even predating Mesopotamia. The mystery deepened. Who were the true inventors of the wheel? To unravel this enigma, a multidisciplinary team from the University of Illinois, Columbia University, and the Georgia Institute of Technology turned to a revolutionary approach. They combined computational structural mechanics, which is a method using computers to study how objects handle forces and movement with archaeological evidence to reverse engineer the wheel's evolution. Their findings point to an unexpected birthplace, the copper mines of the Carpathian Mountains, around 3,900 BC. Why the mines? The answer lies in a combination of environmental necessity, cultural innovation, and archaeological clues. The Carpathian mines were not just ordinary workplaces. They were networks of narrow, twisting tunnels where miners extracted copper ore, hundreds of pounds at a time, for a burgeoning Neolithic economy. Copper, a soft and malleable metal, was prized for crafting durable tools, sharp weapons, and intricate ornaments, fueling trade and cultural exchange across early Europe. Over 150 clay models of four-wheeled carts unearthed in this region and dated to around 3,600 to 3,900 BC provide tangible evidence of early wheeled technology. These artifacts, some crafted as ceremonial mugs with wickerwork patterns, suggest that carts were not just tools, but cultural symbols born in the mining communities of the Bolaraz culture. The Ljubljana Marshes Wheel, found nearby and dated to a similar period, further anchors this region as a hub of innovation. The mining environment was a crucible for invention. Moving heavy ore through cramped tunnels was a logistical nightmare, far more challenging than transporting goods across open plains. The need to haul massive loads efficiently drove the miners to experiment, adapt, and innovate. The researchers' computational models reveal how this environment shaped the wheel's evolution. The researchers' approach involved using topological optimization, which is a computer technique that designs the most efficient shapes for a task, like finding the best structure for a wheel. The team modeled how wheel designs evolved to meet the mine's demands. The journey to the wheel began with a simple idea, the free roller. The miners initially placed logs under a heavy object so that they could reduce the effort needed to move it. This principle was used across ancient civilizations, from the builders of Stonehenge to the architects of the Egyptian pyramids. But in the Carpathian mines, free rollers were a flawed solution. A team of miners heaves a massive slab of copper ore onto a set of logs. They push it forward a few feet, only for the slab to roll off the rearmost log. Someone must scramble through the cramped tunnel to retrieve it carry it to the front, and place it under the load again. In the narrow passages of the mines, this was not just inefficient. It was nearly impossible. The miners needed a better way. The second great leap was the unilateral roller, a critical step from a simple tool to a rudimentary machine. The miners devised a way to attach rollers directly to the load. This created a prototype cart, a revolutionary concept. No longer did they need to reposition logs endlessly. The rollers moved with the load allowing continuous movement through the mine's winding tunnels. 
The final leap was the most brilliant. To keep their rollers steady and stop them from wobbling, the miners started carving grooves, shallow, curved channels into the rollers. These grooves acted like tracks, fitting snugly into holders on the cart to keep everything aligned. By smearing animal fat or plant oils into these grooves, the miners greatly reduced friction, making the cart move more smoothly. The grooves got deeper, turning into a central channel, and the roller became a thin axle with wide, spokeless wheels at both ends. And this was the birth of the monolithic wheel and axle system, a single, solid structure that revolutionized transport. The Ljubljana Marsh's wheel, with its square axle hole, is similar to this design, likely perfected in the mines. The miners' relentless experimentation, driven by the need to transport copper ore, turned a simple log into one of history's greatest inventions. This theory is not just a product of modern computation. It is grounded in a wealth of archaeological evidence. In the Carpathian region, over 150 clay models of four-wheeled carts, dated to around 3,600 BC to 3,900 BC, have been unearthed. The Bronotzis pot, discovered in Poland and dating to a similar period, features the earliest known depiction of a wheeled vehicle, a simple four-wheeled cart with a central axle. These artifacts, from Slovenia to Poland, paint a picture of a technological revolution born in the mines and spreading across Neolithic Europe. From the Carpathians, the wheel's influence spread. By 2600 BC, the Sumerians were using wheels for chariots, as seen in the Standard of Ur. But the Carpathian evidence, predating these by centuries, show that the wheel's origins lie in Europe's mines. Even in distant Mesoamerica, wheeled figurines from the 8th century AD hint at the concept's global reach though rugged terrain and a lack of draft animals limited its use. The wheel's invention was not a singular event, but a process, born of necessity in the Carpathian mines. The miners, likely of the Bolaraz culture, faced a unique challenge, moving heavy copper ore through tight winding tunnels. Their solutions, free rollers, unilateral rollers, and finally the wheel and axle system, were shaped by the mines' harsh realities. The researchers' focus on this environment is no coincidence the concentration of early wheeled artifacts, the economic importance of copper, and the computational evidence all point to the mines as the wheel's cradle. The wheel transformed humanity. It fueled trade, agriculture, and warfare, laying the foundation for empires and industries. Today, it is everywhere, so commonplace we barely notice it. Yet, its origins lie in the sweat and ingenuity of Neolithic miners, toiling in the dark heart of the earth. This shows us that some of the greatest inventions are born not from sudden epiphanies of great thinkers, but from the relentless pursuit of solutions to real-world problems. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories, and drop a comment below to share your thoughts or questions. Stay tuned for more adventures in history.